let's see if it's going to work this time, Lord. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. And welcome to another edition of my Midnight Meditations. This one is a do-over. Because last week, I don't know what happened, but the internet went crazy and it chopped up everything so you couldn't understand what I was talking about. And so I want to make sure that Master's pleased, so I'm going to do it again so that it can be all in one and not chopped up like it was. I don't know what happened. But um, it keeps saying something about a low... A low FPS set the frame rate to 16. I don't know what that means. So I hope that it's not bad because I don't know what that means. Someone would have to try to help me because I really don't understand what this means. But I'm going to go on with the lesson and um, hope that God's will be done. I pray his will be done. Amen. I pray you had a good week, two weeks, and that you had a wonderful resurrection service on Sunday, last Sunday, because it was amazing. He, you know, Master got up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He got up so that we could get up. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Rise. It's a do-over. It's the lesson that he gave me for last Sunday. But he told me to come on and do it again because it was messed up. So I'm going to do it again. So this is Rise to Do-Over. Hallelujah. So I'm going to pray so we can get right into it. Hallelujah, Father God. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Oh, we come to give you praise and thanksgiving because you're wonderful. You're such a good God. Thank you for loving us so much, Thank you for laying your life down, Jesus, so that we could pick ours up. Thank you for all that you did on your way to to the Calvary, all that you did on your way to the cross, Lord. Thank you for every lesson taught, Lord. Thank you for every stripe you received for our healing. Thank you for you taking upon our sins. Thank you for everything you did. It could never say thank you enough. I could never say thank you enough, but thank you. I appreciate it. We appreciate it, Jesus. We appreciate it, Lord. So as we come to learn of you, learn more of you, let your spirit teach. Let your spirit rule. Let your spirit guide. Oh, because without you, we are nothing. So let your spirit live in me, live in us, so that we can be and do all that you called us to do. Let your will be done in this lesson, Lord God. Let our ears and our heart receive that which you have for us, Lord, so that we can be and do all that you called us to do. You are such a loving God. Thank you for resurrection. Thank you for a new life, for a do-over. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to pull up my lesson now and um, get started. I pray that all things work together for the good of those who, because I love the Lord. I love him. And I don't know what this, what they want me to do with this. I don't know how to do anything else with it. I don't understand what it means. So maybe I'll check it out if it doesn't go any better. But I'm going to pull up my lesson now. And we're going to do what the Lord says today. Hallelujah. And this is about the rise. It's the come up. Because this was about Jesus' resurrection, which we celebrated last Sunday. And to rise, oh hallelujah, is to assume an upright position especially from lying, kneeling, or sitting, to move from a lower position to a higher one, to come up or to go up, to rise is to assume an upright position. And it's time for the people of God to rise. It's time for a come up, hallelujah, because Jesus rose and we are celebrating his resurrection. 
Matthew 12, 40. I'm going to start reading from there, but you know, I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to jump around because that's how he teaches me. But Matthew 12, 40 reads as thus, Abba, ebre hedion do socori ilalina. Brendi asti bejon do socri hitale. Father God, let your spirit rule and reign. Let him teach us what thus saith the Lord. Ebe kianta ni. Let it be written in our heart, Lord. Let it be written in our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew 12, 40, Jesus replied, uh -uh. Master, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now one greater than Jonah is here. Master was replying to them. He said, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a great fish, so will the Son of Man be three nights and three days in the heart of the earth. Jonah, Matthew twelve forty. Now they witnessed Jesus restore man's hand. Yet, instead of rejoicing over the brother's blessing, they complained about Jesus breaking protocol. They were upset that Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Can you imagine that? Being upset because somebody got healed? Because it was on a day that you didn't think it was supposed to be? Like there's a bad day for somebody to be healed. Like there's a bad day for you to get a breakthrough. How can anyone be mad about someone getting healed? Yet many people get mad when you get a blessing. Many people get upset when they see God doing something in your life. And that shouldn't be. We should celebrate each other's benefits and blessings when God does something. We must learn to allow the Holy Spirit to do as He wishes, when He wishes, to whom He wishes, and to celebrate each victory. Because it's about him, it's not about us. After all, we are gathered in his name, not ours. Three days and three nights, Master said, he would be in the heart of the earth. Just as Jonah was in the heart of a whale. And we recognize that the heart of anything is the central point. This was important. These three nights and these three days that Jesus spent in the heart of the earth. And in this case, the heart is up utter separation. For three nights and for three days, Jesus was separated from God. His soul went to a place within the unseen realm that no human soul had ever returned from. Jesus did that. For three nights and for three days, he laid his body down and went into an un to a dark place in the unseen realm from which no human soul had ever returned. But he did it. And he rose so that we could rise in him. John 2.18 says, The Jews then responded to Jesus and said, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this, to do all these healings and to speak all these words? And Jesus answered them and he said, destroy this temple and I will rise it again in three days. But the Jewish, the lead, the Jewish leaders and, and those guys, they didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. What he was sharing. They thought that he meant the church building. But we, we realize that, that the temple master was referring to is the human body. As per 1 Corinthians 6, 19 tells us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus' mortal body was the first temple that the Holy Spirit lived in. And just as our body is to be for the Holy Spirit to live in now. It lived in Jesus then. His prophecy came true because they did destroy Jesus. They did kill him. And for three days, he did leave, live in the heart of the earth. They tortured him all night. And then they nailed what was left of his flesh to a tree. And then Jesus gave up the ghost. They even stabbed him in his kidney. Water and blood came out. 
But three days later, Master rose from the dead. And he rose from the dead so that you and I could rise from these dead issues and situations that track and pray, probe and, and, and infiltrate our peace. We can rise because he was risen. Isn't that wonderful? Psalm 16, 8 says, I, this is David talking. He says, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Nor will you let your faithful one see decay. David had confidence that God would never leave him. Because David spent a lot of time in the presence of God. You see, David was a sheep herder, and he was left alone a lot to do his job with the sheep. He was left alone to herd the sheep, and the Spirit of God was his only companion. It was his only company. And you know, many of us have jobs where we're in positions much like David. Not so much herding sheep or anything, but in a position where we spend a lot of time alone. Some of us are single and spend many nights in solitude. And sometimes it can get lonely, you know. But I'm starting to understand that I take those times because I work in my job and I spend a lot of time alone in my office. And I've learned to use that time to commune with God. I, I use that time to bask in his presence, to discuss things with him and to talk with him. That's what David did. And that's what helped David develop an intimate relationship with Christ. It is in his presence that we receive insight. It's in his presence that we receive revelation. It's in his presence when we receive direction and guidance. All of these are byproducts of being in his presence. Because he's the spirit of truth. As we learned in John 16, 13. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, and he will lead us into all truth. He will tell us the right way. He will tell us, the, you know, which way to go and when something is not in, in its proper place. And David checked, figured it out. David chose to spend his time with God. He chose to spend his time in worship and communing with God. That was his choice. And because of it, he was rewarded richly. And when we spend time with God, he rewards us too. He rewards those all who diligently seek him. Because he's not a man that he should lie. And he knew because of this relationship that he had with God that he would never be separated from his love. Being separated from the spirit of God is the ultimate form of death. Because God is life, right? God is life and God is life eternal. So to be separated from God would be to be death, to be alone and, and darkness because he's light. Well, Jesus spent three days and three nights separated from God because the Holy Spirit had to leave Jesus when he took on our sinful nature. When he took our sinful nature onto his physical body, the Spirit of God couldn't handle that. He can't be around sin. So he left, he left Jesus. And Jesus spent three nights and three days battling Satan, his human soul. He battled Satan and all of the princes of hell so that we could live an abundant life in him. Jesus battled Satan and he overcame Satan's powerful influences for all of us. And it's time for us to embrace this reality that Jesus won. When he got up, the victory was won. We have victory in him. And it's time for us to resurrect that concept that we are above and not beneath. It's time for us to come up. It's time for us to come up out of the depths of despair, out of the depth of doubt, out of the depth of anxiety. It's time to come up out of, out of 
this poverty thinking. It's time to come up out of this greedy mentality. It's time to come up out of these worldly ways of wickedness. And grasp hold of these truths that God has given us a wonderful life here on earth. If we could just repent and wrap our minds around it. And it's time for you and I to do that. It's time for us to rise. It's time for us to come up and get what's rightfully ours in our inheritance. Ephesians 4, 8 says, This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. Ephesians 4, 8. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Jesus, when he descended and whipped Satan in his butt, he ascended high above the heavens, past the, the throne room to where God himself lives. For God himself lives in inapproachable light. No one can go there, but Jesus could, because Jesus is the son of God, uncorruptible. But first he had to descend into the lower earthly regions so he could fight for us. And while his flesh lay empty on the cold slab, Jesus' eternal soul descended and entered into the realm of the enemy. Jesus was the only soul that could actually enter the realm of Satan and leave unscathed. And this is because Jesus was a new creation, conceived through a new method, born free of Adam's contamination. You see, God used his own spirit seed his own spiritual seed, and he planted it into a virgin girl's womb. And that's why Jesus was born a new creation. Because he didn't use man's seed. He didn't use a mortal man's seed to create Jesus. He didn't use anything that came from Adam to create Jesus. He used a virgin girl and his, and his personal seed. And this new method is the reason why Jesus was born without the sin of Adam pulsing through his veins like the rest of us. Jesus' flesh was born free of the natural sin nature that the rest of mankind is born with. And since, sin, since he was born this way, sin had no place in him. He had no place in his flesh. And since sin had no place in Jesus' flesh, Satan didn't either. Because Satan has control over our flesh because Adam submitted to him. That's, that's what Jesus says in John 14, 30, that Satan had no place in him. And this is why, because he was this new creation. And this is why even mortal death couldn't keep Jesus down. Jesus over, overcame so that through him, we could come up as well. In Christ, we can rise. And it's time for us to rise. It's time for us to rise and obtain these promises that Jesus paid for. Because he paid for them. The check is cashed. So it's time for us to rise and reap the benefits of his passion. 1 Peter 3.18 says, For Christ also has once suffered for sin, for the just and the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit by which he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Christ also suffered for our sins. He became our sin. He took it on him, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit man. And by which he also went and preached to the spirits in prison. He preached to the souls who were trapped in prison. Now imagine preaching the word of God in the center of hell. He, Jesus went to hell and preached the gospel. That's the power of God's word. It can, it can overcome any obstacle. It cannot be defeated. Not even the gates of hell can stop Jesus from entering in and fulfilling his assignment. And that's it. Nothing should stop us either. I mean it. We should be about our father's business. It's time for us to rise up and show the world who we are in Christ. When Jesus entered hell, he turned hell into paradise. 
Because remember, he told that guy in Luke 23, 43, that this, from this day, you shall be with me in paradise. Well, he left and went to hell, so he took the dude with him. And when he left to go up, he took the dude with him. He also preached the gospel of his kingdom's arrival to the prisoners held captive there in hell and, the, and to the fallen angels that followed Lucifer as per 2 Peter 2, 4. See, Master was on assignment and we should be even if it takes us into the valley of the unknown like it took him. We shouldn't fear no evil either for God is with us. Jesus was left alone so that we would never have to be alone again. God turned his back on Jesus so that he wouldn't have to turn his back on you and I. And we all have a mission to accomplish. We were called out of the darkness and saved to do a mission, just like Jesus was called and created to do a mission. And some of it's gonna be hard. Some of it's going to be difficult to swallow. Some of it, it might even be frightening because it's something we've never done before. But when those times come, we have an example. We have an advocate with the Father. We see Jesus. We look to him who's the author and finisher of our faith. This is how we get by. This is how we overcome those tough challenges. This is how we overcome while we wait for the blessing while we wait for the word to manifest itself. This is how we rise. Jesus' resurrection makes freedom available to all who were oppressed from the enemy. All of us who were oppressed of the enemy. And if the enemy has you down, even right now, it's time for you to come up. It's time for you to rise in Christ. It's time for your change to come. But you got to rise. You got to get up out of that bed of depression. Get up out of that bed of doubt. Get up out of that bed of despair. And grab hold to the higher things. Grab hold to the truths of God. Grab hold to the promises in the word. Luke 16, 22 says, The time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. So he called to him, the rich man did, and said, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, huh, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things, but now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you is a great chasm. It has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. That's right. This was before Jesus came to pay. So there was a separation in hell. Because there is a separation in hell. There was a place where those who died in Abraham were tapped, and then those who died outside of the covenant, those who didn't live up to the covenant, those who were wrong, like this rich man who treated Lazarus like a stepchild because, you know, he didn't think Lazarus qualified. So he treated the beggar like a poor man. He treated him bad. And now after they died, hallelujah, Lazarus, the beggar, was blessed, living good for eternity, resting in Abraham's bosom while the rich man was was in hell dying of thirst so bad that he wanted Lazarus to come and get him from the tip of his water not even a glass but just put your finger in some water and put it on my tongue that's how desperate he was for a drink during his three days and nights in hell Jesus preached salvation to the Jewish believers who were captive because of, Ad of Adam's curse because I told you, we were all born in sin. Everybody was going to hell because of Adam. That's why Jesus had to be created. These offspring were because of Abraham that, that they were talking about now in Abraham's bosom. These offspring of Abraham were kept in a separate holding place because of the covenant that Abraham had with God. 
their souls were sent to a special holding pen in the bosom of their father Abraham. Now when Jesus descended to Satan's stronghold to hell, he led Abraham and all the other Jewish believers out of captivity so that they could be with him in paradise as well forever. He descended so that we could ascend in him. Jesus did. He descended into hell so that we could ascend in him and with him in Christ to heaven. That's what that was. Jesus descended into hell and freed all of the believers that were captive and took them with him into the heavenly realm to be with him. And when he did that, when he freed them, he freed us too. So that we could be with him in heavenly places. As per Ephesians 2, 6, we are seated now in Christ in heavenly places above Satan's authority, above the principalities and powers. They, they can't, they can, oh hallelujah, how can I say it? They can, they can affect us, but they can't, they can't defeat us. We might get hit by an arrow. Like, like, like last night, like yesterday, I went shopping and I don't know if I did something when I pulled a card or whatever, but last, yesterday afternoon, I was in such pain, like my back was in such pain, that sciatica mess started up again. Now it's been a long time since I've had to deal with sciatica. Long time since I had to fight with that spirit. But it showed up yesterday. And when I tell you it came in like a mighty flood, when I tell you it put me on my back, it put me on my back to the point where I thought I was going to have to go to a hospital. I called my daughter to come over just in case. So I'm praying. I'm praying and quoting and quoting the word of God because I know I'm healed. I have the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of me. The devil is a liar. But the pain was excruciating. So I ended up having to take some Advils to kill the pain. But while I was taking the pills, I was quoting scriptures. I was quoting scriptures that I'm healed by the stripes that Jesus bore on his way. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I'm above but seated high in him. Oh man, I was laying hands on myself and everything. Well, today I feel good. I'm all back. Hallelujah. What I'm saying is we got to stand on the word of God. Even in the midst of our trials and tribulations, we have to stand because Jesus led them out of captivity so that we could be led out of captivity. We can't stay there. Satan can't keep us. We are free. And it's time for us to rise. It's time for us to reclaim the liberty. For where the spirit of Christ is, there is liberty. There is access. There is freedom. There's everything we need pertaining to life and godliness. In Christ. And we should rise up and claim this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we can rise up together and do some magnificent things in the name of the Lord. And it's time for us to do that. The wind is changing. We're preparing for Pentecost. And these next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about the kingdom of God. Because that's what Jesus talked about for 40 days. The kingdom of God. He was prepping them so that when they got the power, they knew how to initiate the kingdom in the earth. And that's where we're going. We're going to go. Hallelujah, Master says, shut up. Yes, Master. Colossians 2.13 said, oh, Master, prehidoni, Master, prehidoni. Hallelujah. Colossians 2.13 says, When you were dead in your sins and in the incircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us. He condemned and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Colossians 2.13. I'm going to read it again. When we were dead in our sins and in this uncircumcision of our flesh, God made us alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled out the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. But Jesus has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them on the cross. When Jesus won the battle, he secured our victory. 
Master marched the embarrassed, naked, and afraid Satan and his fallen, defeated angels down the streets of eternity. Marched Satan naked behind down the streets of eternity with Jesus rose with all power and authority, and that power included reclaiming his natural body, which is why he stopped on his way back and picked it up. Jesus got up, and so can we. He did all of this so that we could see that we too are overcomers in him. Jesus is the risen king and lord of this realm and reality, seen and unseen, and we are his new creations in Christ. And God is calling us to rise. God is calling us to come up. God is calling us to come out of the church doors and show the world who we are. It's time for true believers to take advantage of the finished work of Jesus. Take advantage of this resurrection that we just finished celebrating. And stand on his word. Stand on the truth. It's time to repent. It's time for us to rise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Matthew 28, 5 says, oh, hallelujah, Jesus. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. But he's not here. He's risen just as he said. So come and see the place where we lay. It's finished. That's what that means. Don't be afraid. He's not here. He has risen. And so can you. Jesus rose from the dead so that we could rise above our dead circumstances, arise above our dead issues in this life. As per Proverbs 4.23, he conquered death so that we could be reborn. As per John 3, he conquered the grave so that we could rise above being buried under poverty, sickness, and mental strife. As per Acts 10.38. Jesus conquered Satan so that we wouldn't be under his influence anymore. As per Luke 10, 19, we can do all of these things now because Jesus has risen and given us his Christ to strengthen us. As per Philippians 4, 13. These are all words, scriptures that I've just said. Jesus rose from the dead so we could rise above our dead circumstances. Rise above our issues of life. Proverbs 4.23 tells us that. Jesus conquered death so that we could be reborn. We must be reborn. He tells us that in John 3. He conquered the grave so that we could rise above being buried about poverty, sickness, and mental health and strife. As per Acts 10.38, he healed them all. Jesus conquered Satan so that we wouldn't be under his influence powers anymore. As per Luke 10.19. We can overcome all this stuff, all these things now because Jesus has risen and given us Christ to live in us and strengthen us as per Philippians 4.13. This is our inheritance. This is what it's all about. Not so much dying and going to heaven and living out the next life, but living this one out because you're going to be graded on this one as to what you get to do in the next one. It's all it works together for our good if we work it good. This is our inheritance. And it's time for us to take hold of it. And it's time for us to rise and be who God called us to be. I know it's a lot. But this is what Jesus is. And this is what resurrection was about. It was about him rising and opening the door to a new reality. And it's time for us to rise and enter therein. It is finished. It is finished. John 16, 33 says, Master says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. We have all those promises I just read to you. All that stuff so that we can have peace in this world. Why? Because in this world we're going to have trouble. But Jesus said, but take heart. Be of good cheer. Don't sweat it. I have overcome the world already. I did it for you. And I'm telling you these things so that in me, in Christ, you can have peace. In the midst of a storm, baby, when my back was screaming at me yesterday, a part of me has peace because I was quoting scripture. And guess what? The word won. 
It takes time. Sometimes it works fast. Sometimes it works slow. But the word must come back accomplished. It can't come back void. It can't return to God until it's done. It can't rest until it's finished its work. And that's why we use it. That's why Jesus has told us these things. Because in him, we have the victory. In him, we win. In Christ, we win. In Christ, we win. Resurrected. He got up so that we could get up. In Christ. We have peace in the midst of the storm. That's Philippians 4, 7. It's time to get up, fam. It's time for all of us to rise. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, if you believe that he was born miraculously by an, a virgin, if you believe that he died for your sins and he rose on the third day, if you can grasp your mind around that much, then receive him as your Lord and Savior. Just tell him, Lord, I, 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 I recognize it now. I know who you are. I see why God did what he did. I receive you as my Lord. I want the do-over. I receive you as my Savior. Save me from this wicked world. Save me from my own sin. He will. He's no respecter of persons. He wants to save you. He wants to set you free. He wants to make your life better. He wants to transform you and make you the head and not the tail. But you got to rise up and take his hand and walk with him. And the beginning of that is repentance, changing your mind to believe the word of God, changing your mind to receive all the word, the supernatural aspects of God, because God is a spirit. And we who worship him must do so according to the way he wishes, which is worship in spirit because he is a spirit. And worship with the spirit of truth because that is the spirit that we worship with. We have to get that. We have to get that understanding. It's time to repent. We have to repent so that we can prepare for Pentecost. Because if we don't get the understanding, Pentecost spirit will come and go again. Come and go again. Come and go again. And nothing changes. Because the people miss it. They don't have an ear to hear. or an They're not in proper position. If you aren't counted among the new creation, I urge you to become a new creation in Christ Jesus. If you haven't accepted Jesus, I urge you to do so. If you haven't been asked, if you haven't asked the Father to fill you with the Holy Spirit, I encourage you to do so. And I'll talk about that. But you got to you got to rise. You got to rise. You got to come up. It's time to come up. It's time to rise, family. In Jesus name. Rise and receive the benefits of his passion. Rise and receive the, hallelujah, the power of his resurrection in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to say thank you for your word. Thank you for your resurrected power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, that you, when you rose, you rose with all power in your hand. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth is yours, Lord God. And you have given us the keys. Hallelujah. So that we can come and go freely and get that which we receive. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for the gift that you have given us in Christ Jesus. What manner of love is this that you could give us this greatness, hallelujah, in living inside of us, the earth and temple. Lord, prepare us for the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, teach us thy way so that we don't sin against you. Let your word come alive in our lives and be manifested, Lord, so that others can see it and what, say, what must we do to be saved? Lord, make a great name for yourself in each of our lives, Lord, individually and collectively, Lord. Do your will upon this earth. Let your kingdom be manifested. Let your will be done, even as it's done in heaven. And use us, the living stones, to get it done, Lord God. 
We submit all to you, Lord. But we recognize that when we submit to you, we have the power to resist the devil. And he can, he will flee like he left Jesus. He'll leave us alone too. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that we have you to teach us how to live. To give us the good life, Lord God. To live life now, here abundantly, and in the hereafter. You are a gracious God. And beside you, there's no other. We thank you, Lord God, for those 40 days that you rose to teach us before you went back to sit down. We thank you for all we're going to learn, Lord. Teach us, Lord, so that we'll be ready when the Spirit come again. When he summed up for here, but it's so done. Oh, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you're getting ready to do in the name of Jesus, Father. I give you glory for it. Not by might, not by power, but oh, hallelujah, your spirit does come. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I'm excited. I thank you for all those who listen, Lord. Bless them. I thank you right now, Father God, I speak to high blood pressure. I command it to go down in the name of Jesus. I cast that thing down right now, Father God. I speak to eyes, hallelujah, eyes to clear up and see. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for sciatica. I've come against that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I arrest it like it was arrested in me. I arrest it in the next person, Lord God. I bind that thing up, that strong man. I bind him up by the power of the Holy Ghost, and I cast him out of the body. Holy hallelujah and away from us, Lord God. I cast him back to the pit of hell from whence he came. That is an oppression that we will not tolerate from the devil. Hallelujah. And I thank you for the victory of it. Hallelujah. For we overcome by the word of our vic- by the word of our testimony. And I thank you for the blood of the Lamb that was already slain. Oh, I give you glory, Lord. Let your will be done. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for my brother walking better. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God, for you healing right now, giving him greater steps, Lord. I thank you for the day that he runs. Hallelujah. I thank you for it right now, Father God, and give you glory for it. Hallelujah. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I give you glory, Lord. Oh, I give you glory, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. I give you glory, Jesus. I give you glory. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name, I receive it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Whoever that was, I pray that you got your healing. Hey, my brother Stephen, how you doing? Amen. That's right. Go after that sheep. That's it. We got to save every one of them. Let not one be lost. Hallelujah. For it did please the Father for all to come to into repentance. Please us too. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Give him a special blessing. Hallelujah. That's my brother. We, we, For you, Lord God. And I thank you that you make a great name for yourself through that record. For you, Jesus. All for you. I pray you have a great Sunday. Have a wonderful worship experience. Have an encounter with the Christ. Hallelujah. Let his power just flow up in you. Oh, it's a wonderful thing, wonderful thing. Remember how much God loves you. Whenever the enemy comes in to whisper something stupid in your mind and tell you you can't do it, it's not going to work, remind him. Do what Jesus did. Say, "Uh uh-uh, it's written X, Y, and Z. Find the word that pertains to your situation and start to speak it. That's how we do this thing. Remember, God loves you so much that he created a do-over just so you could get in. So don't waste it. He loves you too much. And I love you too. Have a great week. God bless you. Peace out. Amen and hallelujah. Thank you for dropping by, Brother Steve. Hallelujah. Abba. That's cool. Brenda so cruel he shall best see. It won't go off now. You won't let me out. Hallelujah. You want me to pray some more? I don't know what's happening. I don't know, Lord. I best you do see Nana. This is an interesting thing happening. It seems like my computer won't let me go off now. So that means I must have some more to talk about. 
I'm not sure what's happening. Well, I'll pray. Because when I don't have nothing else to say, I can always say the word of God. Because he's wonderful. And he's great and amazing. And there's nobody like him. So, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for being so wonderful and loving. Thank you that your word is alive in our hearts. I thank you, Father God, that we are above and not beneath. Bless going out and coming in. Thank you, Lord God, that you are the good shepherd. You order our footsteps. I thank you, Lord God, that you lead us down the righteous path. I thank you, Lord God, that you are the water when we are thirsty. Your word, Lord God, is water to us, Lord God, soul into our soul. I thank you, Father God, that it is meat for us to eat. I thank you if we taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, we thank you, Father God, that you bless us even in the land of the living. We shall see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, you are an amazing God. And in you there is no failing. There is no failing. We are blessed. Hallelujah. Because you are our Father and our God. So we submit all things to you, Lord God. Take it. Whatever it is that you desire, you can have it, Lord God. For all good and perfect gifts have come to, from you. So of course you can have them. Oh, we love you, Lord. For you are the greatest gift of all. The relationship that we have with you is the greatest gift of all. So I thank you, Lord. Thank you for this moment of actually having to come to you and pray some more. Just to have a conversation with you, Lord God. Because you are a wonderful God. And you do great things. Eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, nor have the ears into my mind, Lord. The things you have for me. Because I love you. Surprise me more and more every day. Because you do the exceeding abundantly above all I could ask or think. Because of this power that you have placed in me. And I desire more, Lord. I desire for it to flow in me and flow through me and flow out of me like rivers of living water, nurturing everything that I come around. Let your light so shine that others see it, Lord God, and say, what must we do to be saved? What must we do to have this peace that passes all understanding? Even in the midst of the flood, Lord God, I can lift up the standard of your word and stop Satan. For I recognize, Lord God, that the battle is not mine, it is yours. So I hide in the secret place of the Almighty because you are my strength and my shield. Oh, I thank you, Lord, for your word. Let it come alive, Lord. Let it be manifested in my life and in the lives of all those who hear it. In Jesus' name. Now maybe I can go. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe not. I don't know what's happening. Why my machine is doing that. But it is. It's doing something, Lord. What's it doing? I have no idea. Praise the Lord. Good night. <laughs>